Hi, and welcome back to another episode. Thank you for joining me. Today, I want to talk a little bit about my birth story. I just recently gave birth to a beautiful baby boy named Nathan Forrest Little, and it was a pretty wild day. Uh, Ended up in an unexpected turn, I guess, and I'm just so happy that my baby is here, happy, healthy, and this was, he was born on January 27th, just for a little bit of perspective and time. So I want to just dive right in and share with you um, what happened. So my water had broken at about 4.15 a.m. I knew right away that it happened. I told Scott, (laughs) it felt like a blub blub and then a gush it was like I could almost hear it it was very strange but I knew right away that my water had broke I like hobbled over to the shower rinsed off really quick and then I called the hospital because that was what I was instructed to do uh, if my water had broken so I called them told them that my water had broke and they asked me if my contractions had started I said no they had not started yet And so they said, okay, well, you can kind of take your time and maybe come by in about an hour and a half. So that was great. I hopped back in the shower, washed my hair, took a little bit more time because I knew that might be the last time in a while that I'd be able to shower. And uh, Scott, I think, even did like a little load of quick laundry and we gathered up all of our supplies and we headed to the hospital. We made it there probably at around 630 And then I went into this triage room uh, where a nurse asked me a bunch of questions about my pregnancy and I changed into a um, like a gown and then I was sent off to the maternity part of the hospital. So that was fine. I arrived at the maternity front desk and I had this really, really bad feeling in my stomach. I thought I felt like I was going to vomit. So I asked them immediately for a pail or something to (laughs) something to throw up in. And then they they gave me one, which is great because it was perfect timing. And then I did throw up. And at first, I think all the nurses were a little worried because of the COVID-19 outbreak. They were, you know, curious, like, oh, have you had any symptoms? I said, no, it was probably just because of the contractions. The contractions were starting. So they said, yes, that's like pretty common. And then I spent the next probably hour just being evaluated by the nurses. They put an IV in me. They did all the the necessary kind of basic setups of stuff, uh, which was fine. And then they said, okay, well, your contractions will probably start any moment and uh, or get stronger anyhow. And they instructed me if I wanted, I could walk around the hall of just the kind of maternity ward area and so that's what Scott and I did. And my contractions started coming a little bit closer together and a little bit stronger. Uh, they definitely weren't super uh, painful at the time. So I had no problem just walking up and down the hall. And it was getting around to the point after a couple hours of just walking and hanging out uh, that I would have a contraction as I walked up and down the hall pretty consistently maybe once or twice like as I was walking I could tell that it was getting more regular more consistent and stronger so I went back in uh, to the room laid down and I had the nurse check me so um, that if you don't know it's just your cervix has to dilate out to 10 centimeters wide for you to be in active or well ready to push the baby out so the goal is to get to 10 centimeters so the lady had checked me and I was at a three so that wasn't too bad I was kind of on track with how my mother's birth for me went I was the first born and so I had a lot of these um, hopes that my birth would be as smooth as uh, or that me giving birth would be as smooth as my mother giving birth Uh, her water also broke in the morning and then I was born at like 11. So my, me coming out was maybe six hours. I was hoping for the same thing, which didn't happen, (laughs) but, um, it was still fine. So I continued to labor. I ended up going into the hot tub, jetted tub that they had there. That was really, really nice. And my contractions were definitely getting more painful at that point. So it was just nice to use the hot tub, um, just for a little bit of relaxation 
And so I did that probably for maybe half an hour or so. The water wasn't super warm and the jets were really loud actually. So it was a little bit um, unnerving to be in there. It was kind of uh, annoying to every one or two minutes have to, you know, go through the jet process. But it was really warm and it was nice and relaxing. So I highly recommend that if you ever get a chance to like give birth, if you have a option to have a hot pool, that was really nice. Um, so after some time I got out of the hot pool, I had them check me again thinking, I was like, oh, okay, I must be in like active labor, like progressing, progressing. Checked me again and I was at a four. So I had moved into active labor, which is great. I was really um, happy to hear that, that I was progressing and it was within a, uh, like a nice time frame. This was probably at around maybe 11, 11 a.m. So I'd already been in labor for uh, quite a few hours, but it wasn't super intense until right around after that point. So I started, uh, every single time I was having a contraction at this point, I was also uh, retching. It felt like I had to vomit, which was awful. The contractions themselves, I did a lot of research into beforehand and I picked up a couple of breathing techniques. So I was breathing through the contractions just fine, but the vomiting part immediately following the height of the contraction was terrible. So I kept uh, having the contractions, they were stronger and stronger, and then I was vomiting more and more and more, very, very consistently. The nurse said she'd never seen like anything <laughs> like it. And uh, so they wanted to give me some medication to kind of settle my stomach and stuff. So. At first I said no and I wanted to wait. I, I managed to wait for another maybe 20 or 30 minutes to see if my stomach would settle and it didn't. So I said, okay, sure. They gave me the medication. It didn't have any effect um, that I noticed anyhow. And I continued to just have contractions and continued to vomit. So um, after probably another two hours or so, it was probably around... 2 p.m. or so no no it was maybe around 1 1 p.m. I had them check me again because I was curious after all of that throwing up and the contractions etc uh, if I how far it had progressed so they checked me and she said I was still at four centimeters which was pretty disappointing at the time so um, I said I was thinking about possibly having an epidural I was open to that I wanted to try for a natural birth if I could but I also know that, you know, different plans come up. Things aren't always going to be exactly as I had hoped, which in this case, I was hoping for a, a birth like my own, which would have happened in about six hours. It was already past the six hour point. So I knew it wasn't going to be just as my mother's was already. So I decided to um, have one other nurse check me. I wanted like a second opinion because I know sometimes if one nurse says, oh yeah, you're still at four, it can be discouraging. But if another nurse had come in and said, oh, you're progressing, it would have been uplifting. So I had another nurse come in and check me, but she agreed with the first nurse and that I was only dilated out to four centimeters. So at that point I turned to Scott and I thought, man, you know, th this isn't going to be probably like a really, really short thing. This could be one of those labors that goes on for many, many hours. Like, I don't know, because I'm at only at a four and I've been at a four for a while. And perhaps I will continue to stay at four centimeters rather than progress progressing out to, you know, 10. So I decided, OK, time for an epidural. Uh, I would be fine with that. So uh, the nurse ordered the epidural and probably in about 20 minutes or so after that point, so it was maybe around two o'clock-ish, uh, the doctors came in and gave me an epidural, which went fine. And that was the biggest decision, I feel, was me deterring from my kind of natural birth hope into getting this epidural. That was a big, big mental jump for me personally, just because I, I didn't think that I was going to need one. And it was a big kind of um, needle in my back <laughs> that is what they do. They insert it, uh, this little drip system. And what it did though, is it took away a lot of the pain of the contractions. Although for me, they were totally bearable up at that, up to that point, you know, but what it did that was really nice is that it took away all of the, uh, sensation of me needing to vomit. So 
that was extremely nice. I was completely relaxed because it relaxes your all of your muscles, like from your waist down. And so uh, after about maybe five minutes after I got the epidural, I could start feeling the effects where I wasn't needing to vomit and I was starting to relax my legs. So um, that, which was perfectly fine. Everything was going really well. And, but then um, my blood pressure started to drop. And so that's something that's very common with an epidural. Your blood pressure drops because your legs really, really relax. So uh, they immediately took some action. The nurse called in a couple of other nurses. So there was about maybe four or five of them that came running into the room. And what they wanted me to do was turn onto my side, my, my left side, and then turn onto my right side as well. Uh, to see if that would help with some of the blood pressure. And I, I could do that still. Like I still at this point had feeling in my legs, like I was mobile. So I could uh, turn and that was fine. I turned to the other side. It was fine with, with assistance from the nurses. And then they said, oh, okay, well, your blood pressure is still low. We don't want the baby's heart rate to drop. So we need to give you this medicine to help your blood pressure. So I was like, okay, fine. I already had the IV port. They do that, I think, with all of this in mind, right? So I had an IV port. They just had to come in. They plugged in a little bit of um, like medicine into me. I think it was like a pre-adrenaline shot, essentially. And then everything was fine. So at that point, though, the nurse, uh, a different nurse who had come in into this triage situation, uh, checked me and I said, okay, cool for that. And she said I had dilated or was at six or seven centimeters, which is pretty big. That's like the size of an orange, just for reference. So I was like sitting there, size of the orange. The nurse like sticks her hands up. (laughs) And then she says, I feel feet. The first thing I said was, are you shitting me? I I turned to Scott. I was like, oh my God, really? So Uh, Just for a little bit of background, I, at 28 weeks, it was known that uh, baby boy was breech. And so I thought that he was breech every single week, like going on from that 28th week. I, it was my number one concern of the pregnancy is that he was breech. I brought it up to my doctor multiple, multiple, multiple times. Like I said, probably I brought it up like every week until I was 34 five weeks pregnant pregnant I think and then at 35 weeks uh it was like oh no everything's head down and you're you're fine but I still kind of had a feeling that he was breached so when he was declared feet first (laughs) or feet kind of there I wasn't all that surprised (laughs) so then they called my doctor to come down and take a look as well and so he did and it was all confirmed that yep my baby was feet first. So just a little bit of reference. It's called uh, a breech baby is one who is exiting the vaginal canal feet first. And this is upside down. Typically a baby is head first when they're coming out. And so because he was breech, uh, it was also known at that point that I needed to get a C-section. So uh, luckily I had already kind of thought about it because I had kind of thought maybe the baby was breech. Uh, I had already mentally prepared that if the baby was breech that I would definitely choose to get a C-section. However, since I didn't know he was breech, uh, I had to labor all of that time up until the point that it was discovered that he was breech. So really, I feel like my doctor dropped the ball on that. He should have uh, kind of known in advance that he was in fact breech, but um, that's okay. The actual procedure was really quick. They wheeled me in, and since I had already had the epidural in place, all they had to do was just like pump up the juice a little bit. So they gave me some super duper hardcore meds. Uh, so that I I couldn't feel like anything. I I was completely numb. And so they just sliced open my tummy, pulled out the baby. And I I heard him crying. Scott was there too. And everything was good. So Nathan Forrest Little was born January 27th, 2021. He was five pounds, 10 ounces, 19 inches long, and super, super cute. Very blonde hair right from the get-go. And uh, it really wasn't as bad as I thought it would be as far as the C-section itself. It was, like I said, pretty quick and I couldn't feel anything. And um, it got my baby out safely. So that that's the 
kind of the good thing about the C-section, especially with a breech baby, is that it's a lot less risky for the mother and it's also a lot less risky for the baby. So those are kind of, you know, two huge points of why somebody would want to have a C-section uh, with a breech baby. So, um, yeah, I decided to do that. And, um, hmm, they wheeled me back with the baby back into my, my room and they let me do some nice like skin to skin contact uh, obviously i got to hold the baby like immediately after the birth but uh, once we got back into the room is when i got to do the breastfeeding and a lot of the skin to skin stuff his glucose was really really low i think they said it was maybe like 18 and it's supposed to be like up to 30 or something so probably because my glucose was very low from all of the vomiting, uh, his glucose, Nathan's glucose was also uh, very low. So they had to take him upstairs to the NICU for a night. And then he was transferred into the pediatric wing uh, a day later. And I was, um, you know, it was hard to be away from my baby for that first day. Uh, but at least for the first part, I had a really good support system with Scott uh, and, and all the days, but I was also very much drugged up the first day. So I slept after probably 6 p.m. I slept until probably 11, p uh, 11 p.m. So that whole afternoon or that nighttime. And then uh, the soonest I could go and see the baby was at midnight. So they actually, the nurses wanted to, me to get up and wanted me to walk if I could. Uh, I think that's just to make sure that everything went okay with the epidural and such. So, um, and I could, I could walk. I moved into a wheelchair and then I was wheeled upstairs to go and see Nathan and Scott because Scott was staying upstairs with Nathan at that point because they have the NICU on the fourth floor and then they have the maternity ward on the second floor. So it was definitely like kind of a challenge to get up there. I can't just like stroll down the hall. It was more of a um, big kind of thing going uh, all the way through the escalators and upstairs. And there's all these procedures because of COVID, like extra hand washing and sanitizing and such. Uh, so it was really nice once Nathan and I and Scott could all stay in the same room, which happened uh, a couple days later, I guess. And that was really nice. It was really tough to be separated from him that first night and, and part of that first day. So, um, yeah, that's my birth story and everything is going great. It's really nice to kind of reflect back on it and how it went and what I would have maybe emphasized or done differently um, as far as really standing strong in my intuition of the baby being, being breech and not being kind of convinced out of that by the doctor. Uh, I feel like the whole situation could have been solved if I had just really like asked and petitioned for having an ultrasound, which would take maybe five seconds for somebody to realize that the baby's breech. And then I wouldn't have had to have labored for like 12 hours. Instead, I would have just had a scheduled C-section. So uh, that's the tips I have for other <laughs> new moms. Uh, doctors don't know everything and you're really in charge of your own body, especially with your baby. If they're in you, <laughs> you probably know the best. So uh, yeah, all in all though, reflecting back on everything, like I said, this is two and a half months from the time of the birth. I'm feeling great. I feel pretty much back to my normal self, although uh, a little bit more sleep deprived <laughs> and all the good things, but we have a beautiful baby boy. Scott was amazing throughout the hospital time and has been still. He's been so helpful, like with everything, just at home and feeding, helping feed the baby. We're doing a mix of like breast milk, express breast milk, breastfeeding and formula. So it's been really nice just to have uh, a good solid mix and foundation of everything. And I will say too, though, one benefit of having that short stay in that pediatric slash NICU area during this time of COVID is that Scott and I learned so much about babies and how to care for them and how to change their diaper and swaddle them and everything. It was really nice. We got tips for uh, what products we could use and all of that. So it was really nice just to have an actual hands-on experience where we had trained professionals kind of show us how and what to do. And it, it worked. Everything has been great. And Nathan is happy and healthy and he's growing rapidly. So uh, like I said, he was born five pounds, 10 ounces, which is pretty small. 
Uh, he was in the second percentile at that point of his birth. So by the time we did a, like a month later, or his next appointment uh, following, he had climbed up to about, um, well, like 38% is where he's at now. So he's pretty good. He's gained a lot of weight. He's over 12 pounds, I'm sure. So yeah, it's been a fun experience and I'll share more on that, I'm sure. Uh, as time goes on but that's his birth story (laughs) all right thank you so much for listening i really appreciate it have a wonderful beautiful day thank you bye